OK, so in this example, we have a balloon is rising from the ground. So immediately, just if I'm just going to go through this, I'll say, OK, we have the ground. And we have a balloon, right? Do, 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 do. Uh, from 500 feet from liftoff point. So you are watching. So here's you. And you are watching this balloon. And you are 500 feet from liftoff. So again, that's going to be a distance that I know I'm going to be using. Uh, that's good. And your liftoff, when the angle of elevation is 45 degrees, OK, so that's another given. So we have an angle of elevation. So if you guys remember, if you have a horizontal, the angle of elevation is going to be the angle above. So that's going to be theta equals 45 degrees. Now, I did kind of change this um, because it is saying it's increasing at 0.14 radians per minute. So the originally, the problem looked like this, but I just want to kind of make it a little bit more conceptual for you guys. Like, you're not going to be like, oh, I'm looking at something you know, pi over 4 like the radians. We usually like think of degrees. However, the measurement of something changing is at 0.14 radians. So we're just going to I'm just going to use everything in terms of radians because that's how the problem was, but just to I just wanted to make for some initial sense with you guys. You know, pi over 4 is the same thing as 45 degrees, right? So you're at a 45 degree angle. Um, with the ground, the angle is increasing at a rate of 0 0.14. So that is a rate, right? That's a rate, so that's important. So I'm actually even going to write that down there. That's another given. So I could say d theta dt is 0.14 radians per minute. Um, let's actually call this x. Let's call this y. Let's call that z again. So we know that x is equal to 500 feet. Um, we know that theta initially is at pi over 4. And so now what they're asking is, how fast is the balloon rising at that moment? So are we looking for a, a measurement or are we looking for a rate? We're looking for a rate, right? So that means we need to create another relationship and find the derivative, right? So the problem, Ethan, with our last one, we used the Pythagorean theorem because we saw a right triangle. However, the Pythagorean theorem doesn't mention anything with theta, nothing with theta, right? So we need to create another kind of relationship that we could use with that. And the other thing is, do we have anything with z, like how far you are directly to that balloon? Is that like mentioned or even talked about? No, so we probably really don't even care about that measurement z. So really, what we have as a relationship is with theta, the height of the balloon, and with x. So a good relationship we could use, because this is a right triangle, would be, uh, so we've got to create an equation, guys. We've got to create a relationship. What relationship do we have with an angle and the opposite and the adjacent side? Tangent. So why don't we write that relationship? Tangent of theta equals y over x. And then we can find the relationship of tangent of theta equals y over x. However, before we even get to that relationship, you guys saw over there, you guys did the quotient rule, right? And while you can do the quotient rule, um, it's probably not like while we can do the quotient rule, we know that's more work. And we know we want to avoid doing the quotient rule as much as possible, correct? So I didn't show this in the last example because I was trying to, I wanted to emphasize doing uh, d, um, dz dt where it's equal to 0. But guys, once we get to this point, once you've ri written the relationship, before you do the derivative, it's actually best to, to, to enter in your information that you already know. So we already know what x is, right? That's 500. So I could rewrite this as tangent of theta equals y over 500. And it might look a little bit better if you did it like this. Is that much easier to find the derivative of? Huh? Yes, right? So in the last example, it really didn't matter. I mean, it really didn't make it anything simple, you know, easier. But when you guys are doing like the product rule, or when you see the product rule, or the chain rule, or not the chain rule, but the quotient rule, look into plugging your values before you take the derivative. Because now, guys, if I want to go ahead and take the derivative here, this isn't too bad. This is secant squared of theta d theta dt equals 1 times 500 dy dt. Oh, well, 
now once I go ahead and take the derivative with respect to t, sorry. So now when I differentiate with respect to t, I obtain that. Derivative of tan tangent is secant squared of theta. Obviously, you got to do the chain rule, d theta dt. And then equals, just tell, pull out the constant, and then you have dy dt. Now again, yes? Um, yeah, well, that's what we're, that's a, um, a little bit as far as, yes, as far as on your short answer. Um, and yes, you could have, you'll go and do, you'll see we're going to get the exact same result um, when we go ahead and do it this way as well. But yeah, you definitely could have done that as well. Um, yeah, I just typed in, uh, well, no, we have to be a little, um, Hmm. No, not in that case. Not in that case because we are given d theta, dt, and, and theta. So we're going to have to be using both these because if you typed in tan, if you typed in pi over four, then you'd have a constant that would just go to zero. But we have both of these pieces of information that we need to enter in, so we need d theta, dt. So actually, not in that case, we wouldn't want to. And that and. And thinking ahead, that would have been the reason why not to. Because if, yeah, if you just plug in a number for theta, which is perfectly fine, right? But then you don't have this, and that's very crucial, paramount to our answer in our question. All right. But now, do we have enough information that we can plug in? And again, what is it we're looking for? We're looking for how fast the balloon is rising. So again, based on our information, guys, what are we really looking for? Yeah, we're not looking for y, though. What, in, in relation to y, what are we looking for? Something with y. But it's not actually y. It's, it's how fast is the balloon rising. So how would we say that in terms of y? The rate of change. Yeah, it's the rate of change. So rate of change of y with respect to t. t. So we could say we're looking for dy dt. And we're looking at dy dt when? When are we looking at? What instant of time are we looking at it? When? When what? When x is equal to a number, when theta is equal to, theta is equal to pi over 4. So that's what we're looking for. So there's our unknown right there. But we have an instant of time, which theta, which we can figure out here. So I'm just going to write this over here. So I'm going to move up. So we have secant squared of pi over 4, or 45 degrees, d theta dt, which is 0.14. And then equals 1 over 500, and then dy dt. And the important thing, guys, I want you to get is once we get to this point, we should be plugging in everything, right? We should be plugging in everything, so therefore, we're only solving for dy dt. All right, secant of pi over 4. Does anybody remember secant of pi over 4? That's OK. Let's go back into our unit circle. Well, actually, pi over 4, you guys hopefully already know that that's going to be square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. So 1 over the square root of 2 over 2 is going to be equal to, so we have 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. Multiply by your radicals. Rationalize the denominator, rationalize the denominator. Square root of 2. But again, guys, you're not just doing secant. You're doing secant squared. So square root of 2 squared is just going to be 2. So we have 2 times 0.14 equals geez, 1 over 500 dy dt. So therefore, to get the 500 off, we'll multiply by 500 on both sides. So therefore, you have dy dt is equal to 500 times 2 times 0.14. And then again, uh, how fast is the balloon rising? So therefore, you can see that it's at feet. So obviously, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't have a, 
you know, calculator, or if there was a nine calculator, you could just, you know, leave that out. You're not obviously going to multiply it. Um, but 500 times 2 by 144, I did work it out with the calculator, which we'll be getting into here in a second as well. And you guys get 140 feet per minute. And that'd be the answer, obviously, with the calculator plugged in. But if you didn't have a calculator, just you just you know leave it as multiplied out, or try to multiply yourself. Anybody have any questions on that? Okay.